Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Crispy pork belly. Um, where do I start with this? This is absolutely one of my favorite things to eat. Now, there are different leagues of pork crackle and I'm an absolute crackle snob. Now, I personally like the, the, the pork crackle that you get with the tiny little bubbles, you know. Um, it's not a hard texture, it's not definitely not chewy or tough. It's, it's really quite light, almost like you'd be chewing pork crackle or crackling uh, or cracklins or, or chicharron out of out of a bag like it's super duper crispy but it's not dry it's moist you get that fat underneath and it's just I, I one of my absolute favorite things to eat now the secret absolute secrets to pork belly is just two things uh high heat and dry skin now if you only had to those two things you'd nail it almost every time and so over the course of the years you may you guys may have seen my video that had a million views that i totally just jagged and had no idea I had a million views on until someone mentioned it years down the track. And so how I got into this was basically people kept on asking me for my pork belly recipe. And so I got sick of writing it out and telling them. So I actually did up a YouTube video and you'll actually see me in my pajamas. <laughs> and, and it wasn't just made from my friends, but, but like big thing is guys, I'm gonna help you guys nail this recipe. Whatever I have to do, you, if you've got any problems, just leave a comment and I'll be able to help you nail it. But I've, I've basically simplified this recipe, removed a lot of unnecessary things that I've found that you just don't need in, in, in the course of making excellent, or if not perfect, pork belly. So I removed the boiling water. I no longer salt and vinegar overnight. I definitely do not score. You do not need any of those things to have the best absolute ever pot belly and I'm going to teach you guys how to perfect it and help you to nail it too. So please don't forget to like and subscribe, hit that button and I'll help you guys uh, um, uh, achieve your goals with and kick, kick, kick all those barbecue and pot belly goals that you want to achieve. Um, but yeah, thanks guys. Thanks for watching and onto the video. Okay guys, so this is the most crucial and important part of the whole process you need to get the skin just right to make it get those really tiny raised bubbles going on now what you'll see here for starters look how flexible that pork is now it's a bit hard to see with this light but you can actually see it's the pink the the pork itself is a whitey color now you actually want it to go from that flexible white color to like a pink color and you want it to be quite hard and rigid to the touch Okay, um, now before it goes in the fridge overnight, minimum. Now if your pork's, if your pork has been vacuum sealed or sitting in a vac pack or plastic in its juices for too long, you'll have, a, you'll have to dry it out that little bit longer. So I go to the trouble of getting my pork from a butcher uh, where it hasn't been sitting in plastic um, because you'll speed up the drying process and won't have to usually dry it too long at all. So if it's been sitting in a vacuum seal, I would usually give it two to three days. But again, you just need to really look for that pink colour and that hard, that hard, um, uh, that hard texture where it's hard and the, the pork, sorry, it's hard and the pork doesn't bend. Okay, so that's the main thing that you're looking for. Um, what you'll notice here on the side, on the back here as well, quite often there's a bit of a flap here. I'll actually take that off. This extra muscle that sits here uh, it is more inclined to dry out. So I'll take that off and I'll cook that separately. But just remember guys, a minimum of overnight, if it's been sitting in a vac seal, you need to give yourself more time like that. Grab yourself your little flashlight, um, anything, some forks will do, um, uh, some skewers will do. Just hit that a whole bunch of times to put the tiny little holes in it. This, this isn't necessary, but you'll find you'll get lots more little holes in it and you'll get the tiny little perfect little bubbles. Okay guys, we'll come back after a day and we'll see what this skin looks like. Okay, so once I've stabbed it with my flashlight, my meat tenderizer available on Amazon, I'll see if I can find a link for you. Um, yeah, just I put it on a, like a cake rack and put it in a dish and put it in a, 
the fridge, you don't want it to be uh, in an area with low uh, air circulation, one in the area of high air circulation, so it will dry out quicker and better. Alrighty guys, so we're back. Now, have a look at that skin. It's hard, okay? It's gone from a whitey color to a pink color. But look, the pork's not pliable anymore. It's hard, it's rigid. That is really super duper important. Okay, do not stop until it's like that. Give yourself enough time. Sometimes it's one day, sometimes it's two days, sometimes it's three. Depends on your fridge, depends on where you got it from, whether it's been back sealed, whether it's from a butcher, etc. Okay, so we're gonna season that now. And all I'm gonna do is get some salt. Yeah, you can put whatever you want on there. If you wanna follow one of my other recipes for shu yuk, uh, which has five spice powder and some garlic powder, you can do that. I'm just gonna put salt for today because this is going into a bun mi. Okay. And that's it. Now do not salt the other side until it just goes on. Okay, now you wanna make sure you wait until it's just about to go on. Okay, because what will happen if you stick salt on that now, what do you reckon that's gonna do? It's gonna draw the moisture out of the skin if there's any left and that's gonna cause problems with the crackle. You do not want moisture on your skin because that is the enemy of crackle. Okay, so we're gonna stick this on now and we'll come back uh, in a moment. Alrighty guys, just looking at how we've got this set up here. Um, Cause what we wanna do is we wanna start hot and then slow it down in the end, which can be hard to do in a Kamado. Um, but what we've got here is basically, I've lost my divider for the middle there that goes in the, bo in the bottom. If you've got your divider, um, that's fine. That'll work fine. Um, basically, I'm just using half the charcoal. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, what you can see here, is I'm gonna have the charcoal over here, the heat coming off that, and then I'm gonna have my split deflector in. And then basically, I'm gonna make use of uh, the direct heat coming off that fire. Um, and uh, to get the crackle going. Once we've actually got the crackle going and I want to sit, slow it down, uh, then I can actually pop um, the, uh, the dividers in place. Now, I'm gonna keep the dividers in there so I don't crack the dividers, but then I'm gonna pop, pop the divi other divider in place. And so that will actually slow it down. Another great way you can actually slow it down is by putting something heavy in there. Um, obviously uh, something that's got some, uh, like a brick, or something, a, a bit of metal or, or something like that, um, that will actually suck the heat out of the system because the heat's obviously going into that. That's another great way of slowing down. Do not use water, whatever you do. Moisture is the enemy of good crackle. Do not use water. So if you want to have a look at that closely, now if you've got the divider that splits that in half, that's great. If you don't, some bricks, some pavers, something like that. And so we're going to have the hot heat over here. We're going to have the pork over there and we'll come back and film that shortly. Alrighty guys, I'm gonna light it. Now, I've actually taken a couple of bits of charcoal out of the way because I'm gonna light it from the bottom and then put some charcoal on top. Now, if I wanna go low and slow, I'm not gonna do that, uh, especially with a Kamado if you're just getting used to it. If you're more experienced, that's okay. But if you aren't that experienced, light the fire from the top and allow it to burn down rather than light at the bottom and put charcoal on top because you can control the fire much more easily uh, if it's burning top to bottom rather than bottom to top and you're trying to shut it off and choke off the oxygen because obviously heat moves upwards uh, the, 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 the fire is going to keep going regardless where there's going to have a lot more control um, burning top to bottom and I'll speed this up fast forward this so you don't have to go through this Okay guys, we're gonna stick it on. So I'm just gonna grab some gloves. What I'm gonna do, first things first. So you've got about, running at about 250 Celsius. About 500 Fahrenheit. Pop a drip tray down there. The way I've actually got it set up, you don't necessarily need it. Show you some photos later, but. Okay, so here we go. Pop this on now. There. Okay. So what I'm going to do, 
I'm going to manoeuvre this, sit that in there, just hover that over the top there like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this meat side down to start off with. And the whole purpose of this is so she doesn't curl up. So I'm going to cook it a little bit on this side, about 10 minutes. But just keep an eye on that. We'll come back in about 10 minutes time. Now, vent set up. Um, I've got this top bit all, all, all fully open at the moment. You don't want to close that down because if you close that down, that's going to uh, uh, lock in any humidity. So ideally, you want to go to bees dick at the bottom. You want to go as tiny as you can go on the bottom uh, before you have to adjust at the top. Okay, we'll come back in, in 10 minutes. All right, you guys, been 10 minutes. Here we go. So what we're going to do now take her off right here for a second and then what I'm gonna do oh, spray a little bit of oil and that's just to get the salt to stick no other reason and then just dab that down a bit and then we're pop this back on this time skin side down might reposition that a little bit here we go just gonna position this a little bit differently now when you open the lid the Komodo guys might pay oh, might pay to actually oh, sorry two sex might pay to actually close the bottom lid. Okay, why is that not sticking there? Okay, and now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna literally close that lid till it's almost shut and I'm gonna watch this as it crackles. So you need to keep an eye on this, a really keen eye on this and a close eye, otherwise you're gonna end up with a fat fire or it's gonna burn and burnt crust crackle sucks. Uh, you can scrape off the black bits, but it's best to avoid it altogether. Okay, we'll come back. We'll, we'll, uh, I'll take a bit of a sizzling. So we're only a minute in. You can hear, see the top left-hand corner there. You can actually, oh, on top right, you can hear she's starting to pop. Snap, crackle, pop. And you can see she's starting, you can actually see it. There you go. You actually st start to see it pop already. Now, people have accused me of using an air fryer and a deep fryer. Uh, you don't need it if you know what you're doing. All right, we'll come back a little bit, bit uh, uh, in, a, in a couple of minutes. But yeah, it should literally start crackling within a couple of minutes. But don't forget to keep rotating it. Oh, look at that guy. a bit of jizz this way. Okay, I'm gonna rotate it again. Looks it's hot over the left. Listen to that crackle. This one guy. Those little tiny bubbles are what really make it. Changes the texture all together, guys. If you ain't got those tiny bubbles, you ain't got the same crackle. Alrighty, guys. That crackle's done. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just put my gloves on. You still wanna keep this on an angle. Okay, so I'm gonna pop this over here. 
I'll show you that crackle in a second. And then we're still gonna keep it on an angle at the back here. Okay, the whole idea is so anywhere fat pulls, you're gonna have trouble. Um, sorry, everywhere fat pulls, you're gonna have trouble with the crackle. Because obviously moisture and crackle does not go together. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Now, remember where that red line was? When I was showing you before, when we were preparing that? That you could see that red line wasn't as dry as the rest of it. Look at the stuff that was dry. The edges will always crackle up better because uh, they're generally a little bit dry. So if you've got that time, if you've got the time to take that extra little bit of time to get it all pink all over, and then no white bits, you'll see it crackle up better. So we're gonna stick that in now. Now about around, oh, oh, I reckon, sorry guys, depending on how, how hot, oh, depending on how hot your Kamado is, you know, roughly between half an hour and an hour. Now this is technically done. This is technically done. You could eat this if you wanted to, but we're gonna take it to that point where she's just melting in your mouth. Where basically, it's almost like a brisket. You can slice it and all the melting happens in your mouth, okay? So, uh, t internal temperature around 200 to 205 Fahrenheit, which is about 90, I think it's about 97 degrees Celsius. Um, but I'll, I'll do the conversions for you in the titles. Cool. We'll come back in about half an hour and just check on that. All right, guys, that's been about half an hour. You know what you just want to do? You don't need a thermometer. Just get a satay skewer. Just want to poke through the meat. Yeah, I reckon that's going to probably need another, it's been about half an hour, maybe another 20 minutes. Uh, now, basically what you're looking at for is for it to, um, uh, to probe like a hot knife does butter. Imagine a hot knife putting it in the butter and it just sliding in. Okay, so you're looking for that and that will let you know that it's tender. So we'll come back in about 20 minutes. Okay guys, been 20 minutes. Yep, that's, that's done. So we're going to rest that for about 20 minutes. Now, back in the day, I used to tap this to listen if it was hollow to see if it was done. No need to do that. You can see it's, the crackles are not so much done, but you can see the crackles perfect by the, the little bubbles there. Um, now, any black bits like there, you just get a sharp knife, and I'll show you how to scrape that off in a moment as well. But that's essentially done. We're going to rest that now, and we'll come back. Oh, listen to that. that. You can actually see that the muscles are broken down and it's about to fall apart and melt in your mouth. Gorgeous. Look at this. Do you see that? Beautiful. All right, let's eat this. Try the meat first. Here we go. Oh yeah. Oh my god. So tender. Mmm. Oh, nice bit of smoke. Just right up. So tender. Break it apart with your fingers. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, look at that. It should be able to, like a pork rib, leave a bite mark. Should be perfect. Oh, that is so good. Oh. Oh. I'm gonna have to change my undies after this. <laughs> That's so good. Again, thanks again. Thanks a million for watching, guys. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe down. If you've got any dramas, please let us know. Leave a message in the comments if you need any help. 
I'm gonna help you guys nail it as well. Bye.